Hey yo, it's me, Frank, the Function Fighter, giving you a little introduction to independent and dependent variables. Now I got a question. What's a boxer's favorite part of a joke? That's the punchline, <laughs> yeah! First vocabulary term is an independent variable. It's a variable, often x, that represents a quantity that is being manipulated. So in this section, we're gonna talk about independent variables and dependent variables. An independent variable is something that we are going to manipulate. And in this section, it's likely going to be either x or t for time. So in an equation, what happens, we usually have that equation solved for one variable. What we do is we're gonna plug in a value for x. And when we plug in something for x, we then simplify this side over here and we get a value for y. And you can see that y depends on whatever we plug in for x, meaning that as we plug in different things for x, we get different values for y. So y is something called our dependent variable, whereas x, in this case, is our independent variable because we are plugging in values for x and getting values for y. Here in our table, the left column is usually gonna be your independent variable, whereas the right column is usually gonna be your dependent variable. In a graph, the independent variable is usually your x-axis here. Now the dependent variable, we kind of just mentioned this, the dependent variable is a variable, often y, that represents a quantity that depends on or is affected by the independent variable. So here you can see we have our equation solved for y, and what happens is we're gonna plug in something for our independent variable, x, then we simplify this expression right here, and we get what y is equal to. Now, y depends on whatever we plug in for x. Therefore, y is called the dependent variable in this case. And when we have a table, it's usually the right side, the right column is going to be your dependent variable. And on a graph, the y-axis is usually going to be your dependent variable. What did the zero say to the eight? Nice black belt. <laughs> It's example time. Example one says, what are the variables in each graph? Describe the relationship between the two variables. So here we can see that along our x-axis, we have weight in pounds. That means our independent variable is going to be weight in pounds. Along our y-axis, we have our dependent variable, which is going to be cost in dollars. Now what happens in this graph? How are these two related? Well, it looks like as your weight increases, your cost also increases initially rapidly and then increases less over time so we're gonna say as the weight increases the cost increases quickly at first and then more slowly over time now part B we're doing the same thing first what is our independent variable that's gonna be along our x-axis that would be time in hours our dependent variable is gonna be along our y-axis that's gonna be temperature in degrees Fahrenheit now how are these two variables related well it looks like as time increases the temperature also increases until we get around halfway and then around halfway, the temperature starts to decrease. So it looks like as time increases, the temperature increases at first and then begins to decrease. And if you think about it, it makes sense. During the day, in the morning, it's a little cooler. Then by noon, it's pretty hot. And then by the afternoon, it starts getting cool again. What did Muhammad Ali's opponents have in common with the X and Y axis? They enter the ring vertical and leave horizontal. Ha ha ha! You try. Okay, we're doing the same thing. First, for part A, our independent variable is gonna be along the x-axis, that's gonna be our time in minutes. Our dependent variable is gonna be along the y-axis, so that's gonna be height in feet. And then, the relationship. This looks like as time increases, your height decreases at first slowly, and then decreases much more quickly over time. So again, as the time increases, the height decreases slowly at first and then more quickly. So it's like if you were to drop something off a really high ledge or a building. If you drop it, it starts going slowly down at first and then as the acceleration due to gravity increases its speed towards the ground, it starts falling faster and faster and faster. Part B, we have our independent variable along the x-axis, which is time in years. Our dependent variable is going to be along the y-axis, which can be earnings in dollars. And now, how are these related? Well, it looks like as time increases, your earnings increase slowly at first and then more quickly over time. Okay, example two says match each graph with its related table. So here you can see the independent variable for each of these tables and each of these graphs is time. And then the temperature is going to be the dependent variable for each of these tables and graphs. 
Now let's check. In these tables, it looks like the time increases by three hours over each given interval. So we go from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. and then 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. for each of the tables. So these dots, these points, should be evenly spaced out along the x-axis. The y-axis, though, you can see is going to be our temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So that is where these are going to vary. For our first table, we go from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 54 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning we're dropping 6 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, after we drop 6 degrees Fahrenheit, the next three hours, Hours, we're going to drop another 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're dropping a little bit of temperature over those first three hours. And after the next three hours, we're going to drop a lot more. So here, this graph looks like after the first three hours, we're only dropping a little bit. And then after the next three hours, we're still only dropping, looks like the same amount. Since this over here represents our temperature, right? This would be probably 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the next point down would be just a little bit under 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the next one would be a little bit under that. So this is not the graph we're looking for. Here, this would be 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, after three hours, we drop a little bit. But then after that, we actually increase along our dependent variable, along our y-axis, meaning that our temperature increases a little bit for that third temperature. So that's not what we're looking for here. For a graph, three we have a starting value at around 60 degrees Fahrenheit let's assume and then we drop a little bit and then we drop a lot more so that would represent this table right we go from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 54 degrees Fahrenheit that's a drop of six degrees and then we drop 12 degrees after that for the next three hours so six degrees 12 degrees that makes sense we're going down a little bit then down a lot so graph three is going to go with table a what about B? We're going from 60 degrees to 58 degrees over those first three hours. So only dropping two degrees Fahrenheit over the first three hours. And then after the next three hours, we're still only dropping two degrees Fahrenheit. So we're dropping an equal amount over those three hours. So let's look at this graph. If we start around 60 degrees over three hours, our temperature is a little bit less than what it was before. And then after another three hours, assuming because we don't have little tick marks down here, we can see that our temperature drops the same amount that it did up here, meaning that this table is probably going to go with this graph. For table C, we start at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, like all these did. We drop six degrees. And then after the next three hours, we actually increase one degree. So that's obviously gonna be graph two because that's the only one left. And you can see, yeah, we drop a little bit in temperature over here over the first three hours. And then after the next three hours, you can see that we actually increase a little bit. So yeah, that makes sense. Can a match box? Nope, but a tin can. <laughs> you try. Okay, so again, time is gonna be our independent variable, just like it was before, but now distance is gonna be our dependent variable in each of the tables and each of the graphs. Now, let's look at our first table. We increase by an hour for each of the intervals in our independent variable, and that's for each table. So the dots, the points, should be evenly spaced out along the x-axis. The y-axis spacing, though, is represented in our table for the distance. Now let's look. In the first table, we go from 20 meter distance to 30 meter distance in one hour. So we increase by 10 meters over one hour. Then after another hour, we increase by another 10 meters. So we're increasing by the same amount each time interval, meaning that we should be increasing the same amount over the x-axis and increasing the same amount over the y-axis. So as the time increases, the distance should increase the same amount each time. So yeah, that's looking like this one, right? After one hour, we increase a certain amount. After another hour, we increase the same amount. Table A goes with graph two. Now let's look at table B. We increase one hour and our distance increases five meters. We increase another hour and our distance increases, whoa, like 18 meters. So let's go ahead and look at which graph corresponds to that. So here we increase a lot in distance for our first hour, which that's not looking like this one. And then we increase by a little bit. So that's obviously not this one. So it's gonna be this one. Let's look here. We increase from 20 meters to 40 meters. Okay, we increase 20 meters initially. And then after that next hour, we only increase two meters. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be this one, right? We increase by 20 meters over our first hour, and then we increase only by two meters after that, meaning that C is going to go with graph one and B is going to go with graph three. We increase by five meters here, and then we increase by 18 meters for our next hour. Boom. B goes with three. C goes with one.
Now, example three says so sketch a graph to represent each situation. So this says the speed of your car on the way to school. So in order to sketch graph, we need a graph. There it is. We have an x axis and a y axis. So the x axis is going to be our independent variable. The y axis is going to be your dependent variable. Well, in a graph about real life, about the speed of your car on the way to school, what's usually going to happen is along the x axis, we are going to put time. And we're going to put time in minutes, not hours or seconds, because what it usually takes you in order to get to school is a certain amount of minutes. Hopefully it's not taking you like multiple hours to get to school, or it's not taking you a couple seconds to get to school. It's probably taking you around 10 to 15 minutes to get to school. Now that means along the Y axis, we're going to have what we're looking for, our speed of our car. And that's going to be in miles per hour. Now I'm going to sketch this graph and I'm going to explain how I got it. So this is what it's going to look like. Now, how did I get this? Well, think about it. If you are driving to school, you get in your car and then you start going down your residential street, you speed up, right? The speed over here increases and it's increasing over time. And then you get to a speed limit and then you're holding that speed limit. You're just driving that speed limit along your residential street. Then you get to a stop sign and you slow down and then you stop at the stop sign. And then you turn onto a main street and you speed up and you get to that speed limit on the main street which is 45 miles per hour and you're driving along the main street and then you see a red light coming so you slow down and then you stop and then you're going zero miles per hour here. Now the light turns green, so you speed up again and your speed is increasing, right? And then you get to the speed limit again and you hold that speed limit. Once you see another red light, you slow down and then you stop. And then you start speeding up and then your school is on the right. So you speed up and then you are going the speed limit around the school, which is 25 miles per hour. And then you slow down and you stop next to the school or in your parking lot and you're done. That's where I got this graph. Okay, yours may look a little bit differently, but just know that you're speeding up and then you're going to hold a constant speed, whatever the speed limit is or whatever speed you drive down a main street, that's going to hold for a little bit until you see a red light or a stop sign. Here, your distance from the ground while riding a roller coaster. So again, we need a graph. We have an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis, our independent variable in this case, is probably going to be time again. So we're going to put time, and this time in seconds. Why? Because the amount of time you ride a roller coaster is usually around a minute. Ride length is usually no longer than a minute. So we're going to put time in seconds along our x-axis, our independent variable. That means our dependent variable is going to be the distance from the ground. So our distance, our height in feet. Now, what happens in a roller coaster you usually start at the ground level and then it takes you up a certain track and it's taking you up and up and up and then at the top you end up dropping really rapidly you go down and then what happens is at the bottom it brings you back up and then it brings you back down and you're usually curving at this point left or right and you just keep going back up and back down and swinging around left and right until you get back to your starting point which is usually ground level so that's how I got this particular graph. What did Mike Tyson say in his love letter to Evander Holyfield? You're irresistible. <laughs> you try. Okay, so for this one, again, we need a graph to start with. Along the x-axis, our independent variable is likely going to be time in this case. Again, in minutes, because your game of tag will probably take multiple minutes. And then it says your heart rate during a game of tag. So your heart rate is going to be along the y-axis. It's gonna be your dependent variable. So over time, your pulse will either go up or down. So I'm gonna show you what my graph is gonna look like. And now, how did I get this? Well, the game starts, and then you start running away. And then someone starts chasing you, so your pulse goes up and then they go somewhere else so your pulse slowly goes down and then somebody else pops up and starts chasing you it goes up again and then you run away run away run away and then you're hiding and then as you're hiding your pulse goes down and then somebody finds you and your pulse goes back up and then as it's at its peak then you get tagged and so then it starts going down and down and down again and then the game ends so you're excited so your pulse goes up a little bit and then you go back to normal that's where I got my graph from okay and again your pulse is along the y-axis that's why I when it increases, it's increasing along the y-axis. Time is just time. Part B, we have the distance you drive on a road trip from Huntington Beach to San Francisco. Now, again, we got our graph. Time is going to be along your x-axis, right? It's going to be your independent variable. Now, if you're driving from Huntington Beach to San Francisco, that's going to take multiple hours. So our time in this case is going to be in hours. The distance you drive, let's say, is going to be in miles, and that's going to be along your y-axis. That's your dependent variable. Now, the distance you drive, my graph looks something like this. Note over here, I did not start at the origin because your pulse is never zero. Otherwise, you'd be dead. 
The distance you drive, we haven't drove anywhere if we're starting at our house. So that starts at the origin. Then you start driving down your street. So your distance increases slowly over time. Then you get on the freeway and your distance increases at a faster rate over time. And then you get off the freeway and you eat lunch. And then it's not increasing at all for a while. And then you get back on the side streets and then you get back on the freeway and your distance increases rapidly over time because you're driving faster. And then you get off the side streets or you're in traffic and you're not increasing that fast and then you get to your destination. So that's where this graph comes from. Again, if you get a horizontal line, that means your distance isn't increasing over time. So you're either stopped or you're in traffic. Now the word problem says the graph below shows the distance that the three runners travel during a race. Describe what occurs at times A, B, C, and D. In what order do the runners finish? Explain. So let's start by describing what happens at each of these points. So we have three runners, the red runner, the blue runner, and the green runner. Again, this is distance and feet. At time A, it looks like this blue runner is running at a certain speed, the distance going up slowly over time. And then at time A, they start running faster. The distance is going up faster over time. So at time A, the blue runner begins running faster. Then at time B, it looks like the blue runner and the red runner, their lines intersect. And what does that mean? Well, that means that they have run the same distance after that amount of time, meaning that they are right next to each other. They caught up. So the blue runner has caught up with the red runner at time B. At time C, again, it looks like the green runner now has gone the same distance as the red runner. Since the green runner has gone the same distance as the red runner, that means that they are right next to each other so the green runner has caught up with the red runner at time c and then at time d it's the end of the red runner's line that means that the red runner has finished the race at time d now besides that this wants the order in which these runners finish so we have a red runner a blue runner and a green runner well if you look at distance in a race each runner should run the same amount of distance that's why they all stop at around the same y value they should be at the same y value because each race is the same distance the time is where each of these have different endings. The blue line finishes sooner along the x-axis, along the time, than does the green or the red. So it looks like the blue line stops first, then after more time, the green line stops, and then after more time, the red line stops. So the blue runner finished first, then the green runner finishes, and then the red runner finishes. So the order looks like the blue runner came in first, the green runner came in second, and the red runner finished third, based on when their line stopped along the x-axis, along our independent variable, the time. 